I'm going to be using two analyses for this discussion. The first one is the analysis of one of Africa's greatest leaders who was advertised on um, the flyer, Edward Wilmot Blyden. And for any of you that think that I was going to have him on today, that's because you don't know your great people. Uh, he died in 1912. Um, but his ideas are as relevant today as when he informed them. Edward Wilmot Blyden. Um, so today I'm going to be drawing from his thoughts and some of my own. Um, his thoughts that come from his most important writing, because among other things, he was a uh, author. And this is a writing that hardly no one has read. African Life and Customs. African Life and Customs. Uh, I have the original publication or republication of this book done by Presence African, um, which was done in the 70s. I think I paid uh, $4 for it. And then this book you see here is um, a book that has been printed, recently published by Black Classics Press, which is an outstanding uh, publishing arm. Um, that operates uh, in Baltimore, Maryland. So we're gonna look at his important work, Africa Life and Customs, that very few people have read. If anyone who does the chat here has read it, note it, because it would surprise me if you have. Um, and then I'll also uh, be looking at, or using some of my own analysis uh, on what's wrong with the state system that Africa inherited at independence. Some of this has implications for what's wrong with what's going on in the governance system, economic and political, social and other in this country and in the world. Um, Dr. Blyden um, died uh, in 1912 and um, his African Life and Customs was a writing that um, was insightful for its time and now. Blyden was one of the few African intellectuals trained in Western thought who understood African systems, African traditional systems. Most of our scholars and the best was Martin R. Delaney and Blyden and Delaney Delaney was a 19th century uh, black nationalist. As I pointed out in a previous show, he formulated the slogan, Africa for the Africans, and then Garvey added for those at home and those abroad. So he was a uh, African nationalist leader. He actually went to uh, West Africa and um, got promise that from the African chiefs that Africans here could have land in Africa because he favored the idea of returning home. That was Martin R. Delaney uh, for a good part of his life. He became a doctor and was the highest ranking black person in the Civil War, a major in the Civil War commissioned by Lincoln himself. So um, he was a great thinker, Martin R. Delaney but he didn't have the knowledge of traditional African culture that Blyden had. Garvey didn't either. Even though Garvey had read this book, African Life and Customs. How do I know that? Because I read just about everything on Garvey. Garvey was my first master. And I read in one of Tony Hill's volumes on the Universal Negro Improvement Association that Dr. J referred to in uh, the discussion before last, um, I was able to dig out of one of those volumes, the fact that Garvey in visiting the, and studying in the uh, National Library of Britain in London had actually checked out 
African life and customs, but there's little evidence that Garvey saw much value in it. Because I think based on his own training coming under the European imperialist system, um, he, he really couldn't see that value, but he did at least read it. And I say that he probably didn't see its value based on a lot of things that Garvey had to say about Jamaican culture and African culture. He didn't draw too much from it, but he did draw from the example of an independent Africa, and he was an Ethiopianist. So uh, Blyden's thoughts are being used here because he had uh, a deeper acquaintance with African traditional life than any of the Western trained Africans uh, who we call uh, nationalists and some of whom were not. 